Good morning, students. I hope you're doing well wherever you are, and I hope that you're looking after yourselves like this Asian guy that you see in this picture here. I welcome you all to uh, this week continuation of our coursework. Um, if you would recall, uh, before the lockdown, uh, there were topics that we're already done with uh, in our coursework, and they included an introduction to genetics. Uh, we spent a lot of time on uh, cell division, types of cell division like mitosis and meiosis. Uh, I remember we spent more than 10 days on this topic. Um, we also covered vegetative propagation before the lockdown. And the last topic that we were uh, that we were studying before the lockdown was for progeny and provenance trials and I provided you a very good presentation which had about six to two slides or so. Um, nobody asked me any questions uh, in those slides so I, I presume uh, that you, you're all okay with those six to two slides. Today in this presentation or in this video we're going to be talking about tree selection. Why do we need to select trees for uh, tree improvement programs? So uh, what is tree selection anyway? Well, by definition, it is to choose the most desirable individuals or trees for uh, uh, for the user's parents in breeding and production programs. So recall tree improvement requires a lot of breeding or inbreeding in order to modify those species or those varieties or those or those individuals or those forest stands could be could be anything for specific traits for example you want to have taller trees in order to harvest more wood you want to have tastier fruit so you want to modify those uh, trees or those individuals or those forests for tastier fruit or you want to have fragrant fruit fruits that are more uh, aromatic that is they smell better so uh, when you walk into a forest you don't know which trees to select and which trees not to select so there are things that if you uh, keep that on mind uh, it would be a lot easier for, for you to uh, select trees that are more suitable for your program. For example, uh, the type of genetic variation in the population, if you are aware of the pop if you are aware of the fact that there are trees that are genetically better, that you can go for those trees, that is you can select those trees for your tree selection or tree improvement project. Or if you have some availability of uh, pedigree information that is if you have some information about the genetic background of the species or of the variety or of the stand where you're where, where you're working also the degree of urgency in establishing production seed orchards that is it depends on how much time do you have if you don't have a lot of time you better don't go into a project like that because it takes time for those trees to grow and uh, to fruit or to give you the required products that you are interested in. Also, type of stand or species characters, if you are aware of the species characters, it, it becomes a lot easier for you to select trees that are more suitable for your program. Uh, and the next point. Uh, that I have here on the list is the condition of the forest. You cannot achieve everything in a single forest stand. Some forest stands are deficient in one thing, but uh, are having an abundant supply of others. For example, you have drought stress trees. You, you cannot include those trees in a tree selection or tree improvement pro uh, project because they don't give you the best that they could. Tree selection is a complicated process. It takes time and it takes efforts and it takes a lot of field work to accomplish what you want to achieve. Um, however, 
However, for the sake of this presentation, I have attempted to simplify this for you. Um, the methods that are commonly used uh, for tree selection include plus tree selection, uh, something that we're going to be talking about uh, in this presentation, or a method that is commonly used for tree selection purposes. Other methods include provenance trials or pro provenance tests, um, hybridization and production, accelerated breeding. Um, for the three methods uh, that we're not going to be talking about in this presentation, uh, I have provided a link for you uh, where you can go and uh, understand what these three methods are all about. Some of the uh, selection criteria that are used for tree selection include um, resistance in trees to pests and diseases, etc. That's uh, an important feature. If you go to select trees for uh, for the plantation or tree improvement programs, this is something that you really want to consider. Um, you also want to have trees that are having higher wood density and longer fiber. Something, uh, something that just something that describes the quality of the wood. Um, you want to have thinner trees that are having thinner branches. You don't want to have trees that are having very thick branches because branches are not something that you are in interested in. It's the trunk of the tree that provides you um, the prime wood, not the branches. So you don't want to include trees that are having very thick branches. Also, you want to have trees that are having straighter cylindrical and non-forking bowls or trunks. You want to have trees that are that are straight, uh, as you can see in the uh, as you can see in the uh, picture below. The taller tree in the middle. I'm trying to highlight it for you. Let me see if it works. Um, just give me a moment. I don't think this thing is going to work. Okay, anyways, so the taller tree is something that you are looking for when you're doing tree selection in a forest. You don't want to consider tree on the right hand side which is absolutely twisted or the tree that is leaning to uh, the right. You also don't want to consider tree that is having a very uh, dense crown or canopy because if you're having denser canopies or or, or the crowns of the tree uh, chances are that you will not have a lot of wood in the trunk because the tree has already invested most of its resources in having um, denser crown so these are these are some of the criteria that you want to keep in mind when you're doing a tree selection in a in a real forest In uh, the next few slides, I'm going to be providing you some important definitions. So it's important for you to understand uh, these definitions, please. Um, imagine you have considered all of my recommendations and all of the uh, criteria that are important for you to know when you're walking into a real forest with your project plan. So imagine you have a plan and you have figured it out. Uh, and you think that everything is going to be okay for you if you go ahead with that plan. So the moment you walk into a forest, you see trees of different types. You see trees that are good, you see trees that are younger, you see trees that are dying, trees that are diseased, and more importantly, you see trees that could be your candidate trees, something that you can select for your project. Um, how do you decide that? So you look at the phenotypic qualities of those trees. Uh, for example, you see that those trees are having uh, a higher dBH, that is the diameter is higher considered to other trees, or those trees are taller in height, or they bear more fruit. So th those are the trees that you really want to consider, but you haven't approved it yet. So they become your candidate trees. Um, so you so you mark those trees by 
wrapping a flagging tip around it um, at breast height. Um, also, you see trees that have been recommended to you by others because there are people like you, like yourselves, who go into the forest and work with trees and they know a lot about trees as well. So, because it's a very uh, expensive project and uh, if you get any kind of information, you really want to consider that information. So, if there are trees that have been, if there are trees that, that have been recommended to you by others, they become your plus trees or superior trees. You select those trees as well, especially when you see it, they really are good trees. So you also uh, mark them by uh, wrapping a flagging tape around it or, or uh, around them at uh, press height, as you can see in those uh, two images below. Uh, and uh, ideally you use flagging tapes of different colors and each color meaning something so those are the things uh, that you should be aware of when you're going uh, ahead with your project sometimes uh, sometimes you also have uh, an elite tree in the stand that you're working in uh, elite trees are trees that have been that have been proven to be genetically superior uh, by means of progeny testing but you don't always have elite trees in every stand. Um, such trees have been proven to be more suitable for mass production, seed production or vegetative propagules but the problem is that you don't always have them. If you have them that's a lot better. Um, I have provided another link for you where you can get more information about uh, elite trees and all the other types of trees that we talked that we talked about so far. Another thing that you really want to know is uh, comparison or check tree. Remember, we had a candidate tree, a tree that we selected in the forest stand by just looking at them and considering that this is the perfect tree, or something that we've been looking forward to. Uh, comparison tree is meant to compare those trees against. Uh, they are almost the same age, they are located in the same stand, and they are nearly the same age, and they are growing uh, on the same or better site conditions. So the purpose of having a comparison or check tree is to compare your select tree and decide whether your select tree is really better than any other tree especially if they are the same age or if they are going in the same area with similar site conditions. So the taller tree on the left hand side is going to be your plus tree. But this is the tree uh, that is known to be better than all the other trees on the site which is clearly visible as well if you look at the picture here. But uh, the trees on the right hand side are not bad either. If you look at those trees, they're always they're also the same height and they appear to be doing pretty well under similar growing conditions. So those are your comparison trees. So you really want to compare plus tree and your candidate tree with the comparison trees and then make a decision. While, uh, while working with candidate and uh, in comparison tree, the following are the points that need to be considered. Comparison tree should be selected from dominant or co-dominant crown with similar age and site condition approximately within 100 meter range from the candidate tree. So it's important that a comparison tree is within the stand uh, at approximately about a 100 meter in which the candidate tree has been selected. It cannot be like a kilometer or two kilometers or that's not going to work. Um, first selection of candidate tree by screening portrays in relation to surrounding trees. 
this is pretty uh, self-explanatory, so I'm not going to spend time on this. Superiority of the candidate tree over comparison, comparison tree is worked out for each trait. So each trait or each uh, characteristic of this tree uh, has to be worked out by comparing the, a candidate tree with comparison tree. And then one has to make a decision. A candidate tree is designated as a plus tree if it proves to be superior to a comparison tree. Otherwise, it has to be rejected. The objective uh, of uh, what I've explained on this slide is to adjust or correct for uh, the phenotypic value of uh, the candidate tree for environmental effects common at that particular stand. So that again is uh, self-explanatory. But if you have any comments or if you have any questions, if there's anything that you don't understand so as ever you can uh, you can leave me a comment in the comment section uh, below by having a comparison tree in a tree selection program you also have some disadvantages for example a comparison tree may be related to candidate tree uh, which essentially uh, becomes a within family selection which results in a detection in genetic gain. Um, sometimes you choose trees that are not bad, but they're not the best because they were they were mature enough at that time and they were taller and they appear to be healthy. But at the same time, uh, you somehow skip trees that were younger or not, not mature, although they were they could have been a lot better than the ones that you've chosen to be your comparison tree, so that's also uh, one of the disadvantages. However, uh, this can be improved by having a number of comparison trees or selecting trees that are not immediately uh, adjacent to the candidate tree. In this slide and uh, in the slide after this, I have included some guidelines for selecting candidate trees. I'm not going to read them to you uh, because that's going to be super boring. Uh, but I know they're very easy and they're very simple to understand. Anyways, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, you can ask me by leaving a comment in the comment sections uh, in the comment section below. Also, um, I have some general precautions for selecting candidate trees in the description in the description section below because that again was a lot of uh, text and uh, that would have made it uh, that would have made this uh, video a lot more boring so I have included the precautions in the description section below that's all the presentation that I had for you. If you have any questions or comments, once again, I would ask you to leave your questions in the comment section below and I will get back to you.